Um, overall, looking um, looking overall, the, the vitals are within normal limits. I don't see anything in the skin. Um, I so the see, skin cleared up. Yeah, I don't see any lesions on the skin. Because I, like I said, I've been treating, you know, with natural stuff. Mm -hmm. Over the past month. And like I said, she stopped scratching, but now it's the eating issue. So I'll continue. Yeah, so um, my question is, have... Did you, when, did you look at her throat? Yeah, and I didn't see any lesions there. Um, nowhere, the only thing I noticed as far as a little bit of fur missing on her belly. She's but, been gnawing there, a little bit itching. Yeah, so when it comes to when a cat is itchy or, or really excessively licking themselves and getting at themselves... And there's no, I don't see any indications of fleas. So that is lower down on the list. So one thing as far as the skin is concerned is uh, if there's any food allergy that might potentially be. When it comes to food allergies, the, the culprit is usually the protein source. So that's I did I did my research on that, and that's yeah. why I thought she needed to be switched to grain free. Or yeah. is that grain only? The grain is not the portion on the skin burning, it's more the protein source. So we would you would switch the flavor to something else that's less common. I would say maybe salmon. Yeah, no chicken, no beef. No chicken, no beef. So try it, the less common one. So salmon's pretty good. It's she pretty have good tried salmon. Form. She doesn't like salmon. I can't get her to eat. Gotcha. I mean, I've tried turkey. Mm -hmm. I've tried salmon. I've tried crab and shrimp, like cat food. So it's just a matter of also trying to figure out what she likes as well. But um, the only way to conceive what diet works for her, if she sticks with one diet and she needs to be on it for about a month or two right. to see what's helping her. See, that's what I'm... Now, my question is now for the, the dry heaving. How long has this been going on? Uh, since I used that homeo, the... um. And I underdosed her. It's supposed to be five drops three times a day. I gave her three drops twice a day. And uh, actually only for two or three days. But that's when the dry heaving started. Gotcha. And I did look that up. And that does make some cats nauseous. I'm trying to find what the ingredient is. What's up? Which doesn't My daughter sense. bought it at a, at a pet shop. Yeah. You know, and I looked it up, and it had good reviews, except a few a few of them, the cats got nauseous. So. Yeah. Well, if you find that this has uh, been starting since this, I will try to limit this. And well, I haven't been giving her that. I, I did for two days, and maybe three days. It, it's, it's I've been I've been just. So the only other concern I have, and this might come a little bit more personal. Mm-hmm. But I assume um, there there are smokers at home. Yeah. So the only thing with kind of when it comes to cats, they are very sensitive when it comes to the respiratory tract. They sense a lot more things. So even the like the aromatherapies are even sensitive to them too. Right. Just yeah. Like my own cat, I can't even do it because then cats get um, start coughing. Right. So when it comes to that, they can also get secondhand smoke, and that can definitely create um, inflammation in the lungs. Probably yeah, I've heard her wheeze. So, smoke this, outside. Huh? Smoke outside. Yeah. I would say if she's an indoor cat, then if you. If I you used do it outside, to smoke outside all the time, so that's not a big yeah. deal. Because if it's a little bit more concentrated in the house, if you're doing it in the house, they're definitely taking that in too. So, yeah. it's, it's, since it's like a second yeah. smoke. Yeah. So, I would try, well, to give her some comfort if that's put, potentially making her not want to eat. Because whenever cats don't eat, there's usually. It could be a, a, a whole bunch of things. But a lot of times they're uncomfortable. And especially if she's been coughing and heat and dry heaving, that might be one of it. And so, there's a different couple of uh, different options we can do here. But I would say if that wasn't helping her, keep that keep that away. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I know have been. I have been. I only have the bottle to show. Yeah. So yeah. I would say that. I only did that for three days, and that's you know she she just slowed down on eating, and I was watching her. Because, you know, I read up on it before I gave it to her. Yeah. But, yeah. So, I would say, um, let me come up with a treatment plan to see what we can do to make her comfortable. Some things, if you want to look further to see as far as her lungs are to, together, to see if there's anything in her lungs that we should be aware of. Um, probably can give her an appetite stimulant, too. It's in the form of a little pill. 
Mm-hmm. But it's not given every day. It's given once every other day until we can get her stimulated to eat. Yeah, because she's so hard. Yeah. I don't know if you tried to get in her mouth, but she's very hard. To... She let me look at her teeth, um, but it was very short-lived. See? Yeah. She doesn't. It's... Yeah, it's like, and that's usually common for cats. Yeah. Like, they just won't let you look in their mouth. Yeah. But um, I would say if and there might be two things going on, it might be one primary component, but as far as if this is compared to any like food allergy, then try to see if you can find a most, less common protein source and see what works for her. Salmon, venison, rabbit, duck, those yeah, less I'm common Yeah, I'm right ones. up on all that, but that's, that's why I thought she was supposed to go to, maybe I got it the opposite with the, the grain free. Because yeah, I thought it was supposed to be all grain, but there's stuff that you can put on it, uh, some powder or something, some uh, protein. But I wouldn't. Do, do what do you suggest as far as uh, food? Um, brands, something. Food brands. So the ones that we usually recommend are usually Hills and Rokan. The ones you can also find online too. Purina. Hills and Rokan. Royal Canaan. Can you write that down for me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, write so, down the recommended foods. You can definitely do that, but Hills, Royal Canaan, or are, are usually the two brands that we carry here in the hospital, depending if it, it is prescription food or not. There's also the See, I, I think it it might be, I've been brushing her a lot, and when I lived in the black mold, I had never had any allergies in my life. I lived in black mold five years, mm-hmm. and I finally got out, when I found out, and I, I yeah, uh, long story. Yeah. Um, she was itching a lot and we moved and she stopped mm-hmm. and we, I had some stuff in the warehouse, very few things that I could salvage Yeah. and it brought those back. So I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if it might, it's, it might be a dust mite allergy or a food allergy. Yeah. Or it both. Because be I've been too. brushing her and, you know, brushing her in cases like, cause, cause dust comes out of the AC floor and I used to clean houses for a living. You can't go a day without, you know, dust piling up. And... So as far as the skin is concerned, I don't see any lesion on her skin. So her skin is pretty good. So I did good. I cleaned her skin up then. <laughs> it's just a matter of seeing what's triggering her to cause excessively licking. So it's trying to go at herself. And a lot of times that's easy. And they've been some... basically eating the same food since they've been in my house. And it's usually... Like, I this past one, I bought a big bag, which is stupid because it goes stale, and I just threw half a bag out because of it. Yeah. Um, but basically, they've been, you know, alternating between, like, two different kinds of foods, maybe three, and I think that might be, yeah. that yeah. might be the cause of it, but. Yeah, so I would say if this is really so food allergy, we can try either changing the protein source or something different. Um, Purina has a good, good a lot of them. Um, some of them are. Some so, skin she needs protein. Yeah, okay. but then she's a carnivore. So cats are carnivores, so they essentially need protein in their life. Right, right. It's just a matter of no chicken, one. no beef. No chicken, no beef. No. So it's, fi- it's just finding which one works for her. Okay. Salmon are usually the most common ones. I know salmon. Everybody likes salmon, but but I can't get her to eat. Like I even mm-hmm. put a little bit on her, yeah. and then put a little bit over here just to get so you know because cats clean. Yeah. And she didn't even like it. Well, salmon is not the only choice. You can then you find other protein sources that are, are less common, but still not chicken or beef. And see did, did you check her hydration? Okay. Yeah, she is fresh. She has good hydration. Yeah. I'm yeah. worried Mika. sick. I'm so stressed. Yeah, Mika's memories are pink. They're less. I, I've been babysitting her. Like it's just been a stressful few days. Yeah. So let me get a trim plan together to see what we could do for her today and see if we can get her comfortable. And maybe this might actually uh, simulate her to eat. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks so much.